Well, you can tell by the way I love my mama, my mama's boy. No time for girls. <laughs> What's up, guys? Today we're covering TLC's I Love a Mama's Boy featuring Matt and his mom, Kelly. The weirdest mom-son relationship I've ever seen. Kim just recently got a job in Texas, which means she has to leave. And I'm not saying long distance isn't going to work, but it's not going to be easy. And while she's there tasting freedom, she's probably going to enjoy being alone a little bit more and not being harassed by Kelly all the time. But let's get right into it. Let's go. <laughs> Kim's leaving for Texas in a few days, and I'm going to throw her a little party. Crazy is my middle name. Okay, but Kim doesn't want... <laughs> your fiancé doesn't want crazy, but your crazy mom insists on it. Despite the party not being about her. A little bit of a red flag, if you ask me. Don't hurt my teeth. Ah! Uh, didn't need to hear that. So sweet like Kim. There is a little bit of tension between Kim and I. Kim may not deserve this party, but I'm gonna throw it anyway. That is your son's potential wife. Now where's Pat in all this, man? Pat needs to say some. We better save some of this for our guests. Yeah, our family. <laughs> Clearly she doesn't see Kim as family. Hey guys. Hi Kim. Hello. Hi, <laughs> oh my god, cute. There you go. Wanted to use the foods that you like. Oh, Pat is the most passive human I've ever seen. It's like, oh yeah, Kim's here. Sure. Matt, Kelly, do your thing. I'm gonna keep getting hoarse. <laughs> there are only four people at this party, but there has been some tension between us lately, so it's kind of to be expected. Of course it's gonna be four people. You know what I mean? Like, I'm surprised Pat made the cut. Kim, we are all so proud of you. I'm so grateful because I'm finally starting to feel supported and taking this job. <laughs> Thanks guys, love you. Kind of a bit dodgy that she said I love you and no one said it back. Come on, Matt. At least Matt. <laughs> Let's adjourn to the other room. Is it unveiling time? Either it's a gift from me or it's something for you because it's <laughs> Kelly's world and you're just in it. Yeah, let's just see. Kelly thinks she's at the top of the hierarchy. Pat just doesn't exist. He's like an ant in the floorboard. Kim, although try to at least assert her dominance to some point, understands that Kelly is at the top and so she kind of just needs to sit there and conform to that. And so the fact that she can joke about it and say, well, it's Kelly's world. Although the dynamic is kind of toxic, I don't really like it. If it works for her, then, you know, that's fine. And maybe she just want to get away from it for a bit. It seems pretty good so far. But don't you just book by its cover, baby girl. You sure you're ready for this, huh? Voila. Oh. My. Oh. God. I don't even know how to play the harp. Are you doing a performance for me? Yes. That is the last thing I expected. I kind of wanted to get like an angel outfit and feathers and stuff, but I didn't want to go overboard. Oh, I'm sorry. You didn't want to make this party about you. That's why you didn't want to pull up in an angel suit. <laughs> At this point, you must pull up in your birthday suit, girl. Damn. It was a joke. It was a joke, Kelly. <laughs> this party is definitely more for Kelly to kind of get herself in the spotlight again. I mean, it's classic Kelly. <sighs> All right, here we go. My God, that was that was tough, man. Yeah, at least play something in key. You just oh. My mom expresses her love a little bit differently. Um, you know, I can recall when I graduated high school, she wrote me a poem. It's framed, and it is honestly one of the most amazing gifts I've ever received. But concerning, I will have full access to Matthew. There's no more sharing him. He's all mine. Ew, Kelly. It's fine to kiss your boy, but uh, just don't say those words before he's all yours and no more sharing. I mean, you guys weren't really sharing, sharing time yet, but can't really say sharing him. God damn, read the fucking room, Kelly. I personally don't care if Kim leaves, but it is affecting Matt. I gotta listen for the I'm beep. Just tired. Aww. Dude's dirty, not three. So I don't think you need to take his temperature if he's feeling a little tired. It's gonna hurt. <laughs> Is that cringe to do that to a grown ass man? If my mom started going up, oh, boop, to me, I'm like, mom, you crazy. Come on, just dab me up, mom, dab me up. I can feel like Matt is pulling away. And it's frustrating that Matt and Kelly are making me feel bad about wanting to do this for us. That's exactly what I was talking about just before, is that long distance can work. The only way it can work is if both parties put in the effort. And it would be nice if she got the support from future mother-in-law and future husband. But it's not for everyone, you know? A lot of people have needy tendencies, and needy tendencies aren't always bad. So some people can't do long distance, and that's fine too. But you need to establish that, you know? Distance makes the heart yearn. Yeah. Who does it remind you of? 
I... Darth Vader. Okay. I am your mother. Huh? Yeah. If <laughs> anything, it looks like Bane, but okay. I, I, uh, yeah, all right. N nice joke, Kelly. God, I've been taking care of you for 30 years. I know. So... You wonder why I'm stressed. What the hell? It depends on how you say it, right? God, I've been taking care of you for 30 years. And I wonder why I'm stressed, huh? What? <laughs> on one hand, you give off this impression that you really want to do it because, you know, he's a mama's boy and you, you, you're very protective. And on the other hand, it's like, oh man, grow up and do your own thing, but you won't let him. So uh, it's like this paradox that you're stuck in. And I mean, I've been intertwined in this weird love triangle between Matt and his mom for so long that... I'm just ready to see what else is out there. Okay, now saying that though is a bit suspicious because then like seeing what else is out there kind of gives off the impression that you want to move on from this relationship. But I give you the benefit of the doubt. Let's see where it goes. Can I come with you guys? Fine with me. Is it okay, kid? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. All right. He can sense when his mom is uncomfortable, but he can't sense when his girlfriend's uncomfortable. It's very visibly clear that she doesn't want her to come because it's kind of an intimate moment between you and your fiance. Like, your fiance is about to leave and you're not going to see her for a while. Obviously, you're going to still communicate, but this is going to last time that you're going to see her, you know, face to face. And if your mom's there, it's kind of hard to do anything intimate. You can kiss her and stuff, but you know, it just takes away from the moment. And this is one of those things. Even if you are a mama's boy and you want to spend all your time with your mom and all that this is one of those things that you probably want to do in private i thought maybe at least this send-off might just be him and i oh <laughs> <laughs> this is my mom bro i love my mom i'm in a relationship with my mom i was you my mom i, I... I wouldn't miss this send-off are you kidding me goodbye kim See you soon. Bye, Kelly. Bruh, you're just gonna be in the car. Why did you even need to come? Like, oh. Baby. I will come out soon. The next day. Ah, the new intro. It's only two of them now. Kim's not there. I don't know if that's a little bit of a foreshadowing, but uh, hey. It's... <laughs> so it's been less than 24 hours now that Kim's left, and Matt is feeling pretty sad, which is a very normal thing to feel. However, Kelly, on the other hand, is feeling pretty damn good. I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> Of course you are. Actually, I'm doing real good. I got you all to myself. Again, all about her. Right now, you can visibly see that Matt is hurting and, and struggling, and her way of helping him cope is to stroke her own ego and say, wow, well, I feel great. You know, she's gone. I got you all to myself, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it, it definitely is toxic that she kind of thinks so highly of herself that I'm the missing the point here. This happy and smiling <laughs> and laughing and wow. Speak uh -huh. of the devil. Me and Matt again, the way it should be. This is kind of weird. I don't want to share you. I know. God, she's a bit of a psychopath, huh? Like, it's just a call. What if you got a call and you went away? Are you going to be like, Cheryl, can we just finish this up? I'm trying to, to drink some tea with my son. Oh my God, she's wasting my time. It's like two minutes of your day. Relax, Kelly. So a couple weeks have passed. Kim's enjoying her time in Texas. And they've been calling and texting. Now they haven't been in contact for about two days. Now sometimes people are busy, especially when you're adjusting to a new location and you're starting work. It pays to be understanding. My advice to Matt would be just be a bit patient and see where it goes. But let's see if they can finally reconnect after these last couple days. When you know somebody's habits and you know that they're constantly on their phone, on TikTok, on Instagram, but then you can't get them on the phone. You can't assume just because they're on TikTok and Instagram and all the time that they're great at communicating. I'm a big culprit of that. In terms of replying to people, bah, if you ask everyone I know, I'm very, very bad at replying to people. <laughs> People's brains work differently. My brain, I get absorbed into what I'm doing. And sometimes even if I see a notification, I, I get lost and I forget about things. And you know, you can't assume what the other person is doing. Maybe the timing was completely wrong and they missed a the call. It is bad that she probably did see the notifications that she probably should have said something and replied, but all I'm saying is don't don't make assumptions. Hi. Hey. Sorry, I missed your calls. Pretty much set to go. Wow. I know. So, what's going on? Wow, that silence is deafening. <laughs> I think the one funny thing about this show is that when there's like awkward silence, you can practically hear the crickets. My assumptions may be correct. I think she's, she's ready to move on. Um, Well, I... Fuck, man. If you're gonna be creepy and spy on the conversation, why do you need to even pretend like you're cleaning? I've seen some other, like, mama's boys and moms and stuff, but Kelly is by far the most evil. 
I think the word I'm looking for is I compared it to Corella Deville like in the last episode. So I mean like take that information and do with it what you will. Oh, I just feel uncomfortable when Kelly's looking. I mean, miss you guys. It's kind of hard on me. I'm not having a very easy time with all this, and I feel like I probably just want to come out. You want to come out, huh? <laughs> I, I know we've all had the assumptions, but you know, I, I digress. I feel like I have to jump on a plane right now because this is something that Kim and I have to work out together. Okay, let's let's review the whole situation. So she's been gone for a couple weeks now. Matt also said that he would visit her in a, in a few couple few weeks i don't know a couple in a few what's the difference right Maybe. i will come out soon but the fact that he said that he would look at some flights and see when he could go they didn't disclose the conversations that they had within those couple of weeks so we don't know for sure if they talked about flights but it doesn't seem like matt has put in any effort i get that he's busy you know sorting out the house you know that's your fiance over there i would make an effort to at least talk about when there would be a time that he would go and visit but that's the thing that's probably one thing that has has steered her away is the fact that maybe Matt hasn't brought up the idea of going to visit her and only now that things are looking dim Matt is now being like oh, shit, man, I need to get over there and then try save this relationship which is cool you're fighting for your relationship but maybe you should have done that a little bit earlier my man all right well I will look into flights and stuff I'll let you know what I find and I'll try to come out as soon as I can and um I was cleaning yeah. I wasn't listening I'm sure she wants people to know that she was listening. This weird twisted mentality. Get two tickets. What? I'm going. You need me, Matt. When you book, remember, I like first class. Yeah, you're getting last class. I'm sorry. I love my mom. If I had some money, I'd think about first class. <laughs> I get it. It's probably some humor to, to lighten the mood, but... Uh... Okay, so now we move on to Kim's perspective, and we finally get to see what has been going on in Kim's head. You're not wearing your ring. Yeah. What's your status right now with Matt? You're still engaged? The ring is a sign that you've in a committed relationship and you're committed to this marriage or potential marriage. It's only been a couple weeks too. It almost shows how deep Kim was in this whole Matt and Kelly situation. It shows how trapped she must have really felt to the point where she's taken off her engagement ring. It's not looking good for Matt. Can only take so much being that third wheel and kind of being a punching bag in a sense and it's just, it's really starting to weigh on me and affect our relationship. The thing about these mama's boys is that they just don't understand that if you want a loving relationship with someone, you kind of need to let go of your mom to some certain degree. Like, it's fine to be a mama's boy, but you got to understand that there's a level of privacy that you need with your partner, your life partner like just like how kelly has pet although i think pet doesn't really exist at this point so now we are fast forward to the time where matt and kelly has made their way to texas to go and confront and talk to kim about everything that's going on tensions are high and this conversation is going to go one way or the other they're either going to stay together and work things out or they're going to break up matt of course brings kelly along which leads me to think that this is going to end very very poorly matt says some things like kim has disappointed me a lot lately and um i don't have very high expectations for her anymore the thing is i kind of need to see proof that you've been trying to make this long distance work otherwise the fault lies not only with kim but with you too so it lies with both of you let's be real bro you've disappointed her quite a lot my whole last episode was <laughs> talking about how to be a supporting boyfriend and let's be real all those notes <laughs> Do not scream, supporting boyfriend. <laughs> Build home on mother's property. Agree with girlfriend's ideas, then choose your mom's instead. Live with slash nearby your mom for life. Change your mama's diapers. Side with your mom at all times. Go back on your word. Give your mom a key to your house. Break your promises. Leave your girlfriend behind. <laughs> Bring your mom to everything. And my personal favorite, date your mom slash or at least look like it we as a couple or individuals had room for growth living under her roof that was always an issue <laughs> why are you laughing at that because my mom is just not going to stop it sucks because i wish that you wanted the same things that i did the same things would mean us kind of going away from my mom and my family and making our own thing and them just kind I of i mean family is important but there are boundaries that should be set kelly 
oversteps some boundaries sometimes. And the fact that he understands that and does nothing about it, like him says, she's going to be his potential wife and therefore she needs to be a priority. And the fact that he understands that he can't really because he wants to stay with his mom is concerning and it's a very, very big red flag. That's the thing about being an adult and maturing is that learning to balance your time, balance things in your life. You know, you can make time for your mom and you also can make time for your wife, but you you guys need to communicate that and talk about it. And clearly you guys haven't because Kim has always just been letting things happen. It makes sense where the relationship has ended up. I really don't do well watching conversations like this, but oh man, let's let's sit through this train wreck together, shall we? It's not just her fault. I mean, you're a grown man and you kind of have to take responsibility for those things. Yes, your mom's crazy, but no, like you, you put me through it and you put us through it. I just flew all the way here and you just tell me you don't enjoy life with me so just kind of man i feel like matt is a grown man child the fact that he like pulled the victim card and saying oh man i flew all the way out here and you're saying you don't enjoy life with me it sounds like kelly to some certain degree you know what i mean always points out the things that he's done right but he never points out the things that he's done wrong and when kim goes and points those things out he gets a real defensive and for you to have a successful relationship man i'm sorry but you got to learn to do those things it's okay to be wrong sometimes. If I didn't come out and we didn't have this talk, we would just beat around the bush for how long? A couple weeks, a couple days, months? Mom. You, you brought your mom with you? I don't know why you didn't bring your mom out at the end of the conversation. You guys are getting to a pretty tense point. It's always been two against one. Now more than ever, I feel so alone. Kim feels that she is the puppet master of Matthew. It's not going to be that way on my watch. That is rich, bro. Everyone's already said it. it's Callie's world. The fact that they say that already puts you in the shoes of the puppet master. As Kim said, it's always been 2v1. So whatever she says has always been invalidated. So the fact that there was this moment here for kim and matt to have this 1v1 it's finally fair both parties can get what they're feeling off their chest and i think with matt he's always felt like if he's in a losing situation he needs an extra hit to then support his views which is why his mom's always around kim or any other potential partner will never have the upper hand and have the chance to say how they feel and if they repress their feelings all the time how can they truly ever be happy it's weird because that's when matt brought his mom in you know when he felt like he was losing this and I guess argument, quote unquote argument. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna bring my mom in because mom's got a stronger head and she's gonna steer head this entire conversation and help me be the victim slash winner of this argument. 30 years old and you can't have a grown ass conversation with a woman. So. Go ahead. Like, I, Kelly, we are just having like a pretty like deep talk. Whatever Matthew goes through, I'm involved. Yeah, you can be involved, but be involved afterwards it's like no one knows how to read the room this proves my point from before as well because even matt feels uncomfortable to talk now matt's literally handing the baton over to his mom so that she can take care of the situation from what i see here is matt needs to grow up and learn how to handle these situations on his own because otherwise you're forever a man child it's not the most attractive trait to have be willing to pack a duffel bag and matt that's honestly not even what it is so surface level matt just hasn't been an, a good partner my son pours his heart into everything he does that goes for the person he loves uh yes and no if you really poured all the love into what you do i mean you would be a little bit more supporting with her move and not be such a mope and just be sad and make everything about you just like oh just like what kelly does makes everything about her mm. Mm. your mom is your go-to person your fiance should be your go-to person i don't know if i see you as being my husband kim i'm done I told you she'd do it Get your stuff, mom. We're leaving. I'm sorry. I know this is a very tense moment. Even I, I'm getting kind of the cringy chills. But uh, you ever seen a grown ass man, 30 year old man uh, in a restaurant go, F you, him. Let's go, mom. Mom, come on, mom. Let's go. Mom, you drove. Come on, mom. I can't drive. Mom, come on. Go to hell, Kim. F yourself. Come on. That pretty much confirms the whole man-child thing. I'm not saying a man can't get angry, but I'm sorry, but, but like, you're having a really deep conversation about your relationship. I don't think being angry is warranted just because she said she deserves better. If you are adamant about thinking you are more right in the situation, then you should probably talk about it and be a bit more assertive and affirmative about the fact that you think you were a better partner in the relationship. But the moment you break and you cave and you start using profanity, then I think 
think you've lost. I think Kim was being as mature as possible. And I honestly, I think you were. Matt was being as mature as he could be. But he's a bit of a man-child, so that's the extent of his maturity, unfortunately. I saw none of this coming. I, I can't believe how all this just went down in there. You can't say you can't didn't expect all that to go down, and then also before you were saying, I told you she would do this. Bit of a paradox there, a bit of a contradicting line. Yeah, I'm sure even Kelly was surprised. She's like, ah. Son, uh, I raised you a little bit better than that. You should probably not yell at a woman. Why does she f think my mom won't be here? My mom's the person I'm gonna go talk to right now and wonder about how I wasted, apparently, years of my 20s on someone that doesn't care and that's gonna be on to the next guy. Another very immature thing is that he assumes that She's just gonna move on to the next guy straight away, which, you know, let's be honest here, maybe, maybe she will, but that's not the reason she moved to Texas in the first place. She wanted to further her career and also live a little bit of an independent life. For you to just jump to that conclusion, ah, oh man, it's some very, very immature behavior, my friend. I want someone that's going to love me, love my family, and understand that my relationship with my mom is not going to change. I can't believe it. If your relationship with your mom's not gonna change, that's fine. And if you want to find someone that loves you and your mom, that's cool too. Thing is, yeah, your mom and you kind of need to reciprocate that. Like, yeah, you love your partner, but does your mom? And I think Kelly was slowly warming up to Kim as well. And it seemed like they had somewhat of a good relationship based on Kelly's standards. But that's not gonna work for everyone. It's just not. What can I do to help you? What can I do? I've been together with Kim for over four years. Over four years and you haven't drawn a line to, you know, where your mom shouldn't cross or where your fiance shouldn't cross. I, I'm surprised your relationship lasted that long. Goodness gracious me, four years. Your mom still acts like you love her. I, I... Relationships, a lot of them don't work out. She's not the person I fell in love with anymore. I remember everything. Like, I remember the first time we had sex. What? God damn it, man. That's the first thing you bring up to your mom. Man, maybe you just remember her for the pum pum. Oh, God. The, the sad thing is, is that this is what happens during break breakups. When people get emotional, I get it. You know, you, you want to feel like the victim in the situation. No one ever wants to feel like the bad guy, right? You jump to that conclusion yourself without really coming to a proper resolve in that conversation, in that relationship. So... It's kind of not warranted for you to just go ahead and be the victim straight away. It's not like she outright said she wants to break up with you, but she said she wants more. So you could have easily at that moment said, look, I can try and work things out and do better. If it's not going to work, then hey, then that's that's on me. I fucked up. But for you to explode like that, a little bit immature for you to then just go and play the victim card. I don't, I don't know. She's not the same Kim that is She's when not. we met. She doesn't ride me like she used to, bro. She doesn't bend it over like I remember. She... <laughs> Kim broke more than my heart. She broke my, my balls. <laughs> I bought her a car. I I paid for her to move out here. Like she's she's had a privileged life with us. And you and dad, you've paid for her food, her phones, everything for you. Four years? I can somewhat relate to your situation in that I, I have been in, in toxic relationships before. You know, one in particular where I also spent, you know, a lot of time and money and effort in and I felt like I was unappreciated. But I think the difference between that relationship and the relationship that you have now with Kim is that I really did try and I really did fight for this relationship. I went out of my way to fly to places and, and do things that were completely out of my comfort zone despite having trying to build a home back home didn't want to limit this person and i wanted to do whatever i could to support her in any endeavors that she wanted to to go on the thing is i don't see the same amount of effort being reciprocated your way the fact that you only fly to places only when you think things are going wrong why would you want to see someone in person that you wholeheartedly love and have loved for over four years only when things are like bad why do, why wouldn't you want to go and see when when she's at her top and her best and same with you and then you can keep letting that love flourish and it's always difficult when you can feel someone distancing themselves and pushing themselves away you gotta understand that sometimes it's just not meant to be but you can't beat yourself up i think this is a good point for you to start growing up and understanding what it takes to really be in a relationship, a long-term committed relationship. You know, as humans, we learn from our mistakes. We learn from experiences, life experiences. And I think you're gonna learn a lot from this too. I think you're gonna bounce back, but I think you need to understand what went wrong, like what truly went wrong in this relationship in order to have the next one succeed. Honestly, I know I make jokes and I make fun of all of this and you know, I, I kind of mock Kelly and you a lot, but truth of the matter is I don't wanna see anyone fail. Like I said, I love love. I think you do need to do a little bit of growing in order to succeed that's why kim is fine 
and she will be fine after a while because she's learned and understand how to be truly happy. And although she may have been happy with you in the moment, it wasn't really her true happiness because she was, you know, overshadowed by this giant shadow that was Kelly. What she did, no, it can't be forgiven. But I'm here for him, to help him through it. Mama Bear is here to protect her cub. I'm so sorry, Mom. And that is the end of this season of I Love a Mama's Boy. It ends sadly in a breakup between Matt and Kim, which breaks my heart a little bit because like I said, I love love. But the sad thing is, is that not only does Matt not see the error of his ways, but Callie doesn't either. And I think that reinforces their idea that they weren't in the wrong. It's all about putting in effort and showing that you care. There was a little lackluster both ways. I don't deny that Matt is probably somewhat of a nice guy. There's a lot of moments that I question his niceness and his support to his girlfriend. Sorry, fiance. Sorry, ex-fiance. <laughs> and there are times where I question Kim's too, because, you know, instead of just being distant and cold, she could have communicated how she felt a little bit early, and I know she was just trying to take time to process her feelings and emotions and all that, but it's not fair to Matt as well. But hey, that is the end of this episode, and wow, what a roller coaster of emotions. It was the finale, and I think, honestly, I think Kim and Matt, they're gonna be happier moving on. It's not the end of the world, and I wish Matt and Kim all the best. Hell, I wish Kelly the best too, but Kelly, you gotta do a little bit of moving on yourself. So that ends the whole Kim and Matt trilogy, and the next episode, that's right, there is a next episode because there's a season three of I Love a Mama's Boy. Matt, believe it or not, starts dating someone else that's right there is a new girl in matt's life sorry in matt and kelly's life and if you guys want to see more of that please make sure you subscribe because i will be dropping that video real soon let me know what you guys think about this whole matt kim kelly triangle situation leave it in the comments below and i can't wait to see you guys again it's me lv take care of yourselves and i'll see you next time peace